Oh, you can scream, shout, whine, cry, snivel, piss, and fucking moan. You can shove your opinion up your ass. That way your head has something to keep it company. Or what? Oh! Or could maybe it be that you are wrong and I am right. Yeah, I think that's what's going on here. And it's that way because that's just the motherfucking way it is, you know? Roll the bones, motherfucker. Why are we here? Because we're here. And the subject of being here, we are here right now at the Cynical Libertarian Society, and I am the great one himself. This is Stating the Obvious, the weapons platform from which I launched the cruise missile of my intellect that holds on and destroys with a nuclear fucking warhead. All the dumbass, cocksucking, motherfucking, statist motherfuckers out there in the world. And occasionally there are survivors who get mowed down with the machine gun. I am the Great One himself, and this is Stating the Obvious, brought to you by the Cynical Libertarian Society. We are on the internet at cynlibsoc.com. You can email myself or the lovely and adorable Randy, who's over there on the other side of the glass in the control room, being seen and not heard. Keeping me in line, on track occasionally. You can send us an email. You can send us your love mail. You can send us your hate mail. You can, if you're good looking of either gender, you can send us pictures of yourself naked. We always appreciate those. That email address is God. That's dog spelled backwards. God at 204. Not 20. Uh, that's God at C-Y-N-L-I-B-S-O-C.com. God. See, I'm, I'm getting confused. Ca- I'm sort of other websites that I was looking at lately. Cash was it Cash Cats? Cash Cats dot biz. Cash C A S H Cats C A T S dot biz. It's pictures of cats with cash and in some cases guns. It's awesome. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's fantastic. Cash cats dot biz. Go check it out, man. Alright, today on stating the app, what is today? Today is the twentieth of October here in Fort Collins, it's Zombie Crawl Day. That's going to be happening later on. Be out checking that shit out. It's going to be groovy. That's the plan anyway. Hopefully the weather will not suck. 20th of October, in the year of our Lord, Hussein Obama, 2012. Closing in on the day in the year 2012 when the Mayan calendar runs out or the Aztec calendar or whoever's calendar. And we're all going to die. The world's going to end. I don't understand why anybody is really concerned about the upcoming presidential election because we're all supposed to die this year. The world is ending. And Randy is already telling me this has nothing to do with what I'm supposed to be talking about. And she's right. I'm going to try to focus. So let me not tell another story. I was about to say... (laughs) I was about to say, I'm going to try to focus. So, and then I was going to go off on a story that has nothing to do with what I'm supposed to be talking about. And now here I am talking about that, which is nothing to do with what I'm supposed to be talking about. All right, here we go. Today, I'm going to talk about the rich. Because, oh, the rich. Rich people. Rich people are, are the bane of our existence. I mean, rich people are destroying the world. Rich people are responsible for all evils. You know, it, it's everything that's bad is because of rich people. And these are the myths that permeate our society. You know, there's there are three beliefs that I run into about the rich. First of all, rich people are evil. There's this idea that if you're rich, you must be a bad person because... You know, the only way you can be rich is by being evil, because to be rich, you have to take that away from other people. Nobody makes money honestly, except, of course, for you. And I always love when rich people, because remember, rich is all relative. I mean, what is rich to one person? What is rich to another person, financially speaking? You know, I, I love it when I hear people that I know for a fact are making six figures a year. 
talking shit about rich people. Okay, so the first the first myth is that rich people are all evil. The second myth I'm going to talk about is about how the rich don't see and or perhaps you could say ignore the poor or you know they are ignorant to our plight so forth and so on. And the third myth is how the rich want to kill all of the poor people. And I'm I'm calling these myths. That's maybe not quite the right word. You know, it the let me rephrase it this way. There are beliefs that the 99 percenters, you know, those of you who are statist and those of you who are quote-unquote poor, even though some of you are making six figures a year, there are these beliefs that you have about people who are rich. And by rich, of course, we mean people who are making more money than you're making. Because let's face it, all of us define rich as people who have more money than us. Nobody ever sits around and goes, oh, I'm rich. You know, the people I know making $200,000 a year don't think that they're rich. Okay, so the beliefs that the statists who hate rich people have about rich people are that rich people are evil, are that rich people just don't see the plight of those underneath them further down the economic ladder, and that, of course, the rich people want to kill the poor people. Now, let me talk about that last one for a minute to illustrate to you that I don't say that as like some kind of a joke or as an exaggeration. And I've talked about this before on Stating the Obvious in more in-depth. My mother, who gave birth to me and put up with my shit for 18 years and whom I love as my mother, is also one of the stupidest fucking people on the planet when it comes to politics because she is a statist. My mother seriously believes that if Mitzi, that's... Mitt Romney, for those of you who haven't listened to this before, Mitzi is my pet name for him. If Mitzi becomes president of the United States, he is going to kill all of the poor people. Now, understand what the fuck I am saying to you. My mother is not speaking metaphorically. My mother believes that just like Hitler, whom she idolizes, whom she's read every book about, my mother believes, because she's a statist, my mother believes that just like Hitler put Jews in concentration camps and killed them, my mother believes that Mitzi is going to kill all of the poor people in the United States by cutting off their food supply and letting them starve to death. You know, kind of like how Stalin, a statist, a communist, a socialist, like those of you who are liberal Democrats, killed all those people in the Soviet Union by starving them to death. My mother seriously believes that Mitzi, if he becomes president, is going to kill all the poor people by cutting off their food and starving them to death. So when I say this, when I say that people who are poor, I'm making little quotes in the air with my fingers, believe that the rich are going to kill the poor people or want to kill the poor people, this is not a fucking metaphor or anything like that. I mean this seriously. And so I want to, I'm going to examine each of these three myths, each of these three concepts, these three belief systems. So first off, Rich people. Are rich people rich because they are evil? Are rich people rich because they're going out and they're taking things from the poor? I mean, there, it seems to me that there's this, you know, people, people who are poor go, well, you know, the rich people are keeping me down. Now, never in my life have I been at home and I've had like a stack of money and I went to sleep and while I was sleeping, a rich person broke into my house and took my money. Never have I gone out and applied for a job and then not gotten the job because the job was given to a rich person. Why are the rich people rich? Is it because they're evil and because they steal things from the poor people? In a sense, yes. And we'll come to that at the, at the end of this. But let's look at, before we get into that, let's look at some other reasons why the rich people are rich. Rich people are rich because you poor people work for them. Let's take, for example, Steve Jobs. 
whom, while I admire in some ways, I also despise in others, and his, you know, Apple products and Apple Corporation that has all this shit tons of money, has more money than the government of the United States, which, which isn't really hard to do considering how far in debt the government of the United States is. How did Steve Jobs and Apple Corporation get to be that rich? Did Steve Jobs break into the ghetto apartments of welfare mothers and steal their welfare checks? No, no, that's, that's not what he did. He started a company that manufactured and created products that people were willing to pay money for, products and services. Now, did Steve Jobs build all of those Macintosh computers and iPads and iPhones by himself? Did he do all that in his garage? Yes, I know Apple started in the garage. Is the iPhone 5 being built by Steve Jobs in his garage? No, no, I don't think it is. It's being built by you. There are thousands and thousands of thousands of people out there all across the United States working for the Apple Corporation distributing the products which are built by China, built in China by slave labor. There's another story. And providing all of the services and all of this. And while, yes, they're getting paid for what they're doing, but ultimately what they're doing is they're funneling all of this money to Apple Corporation. To, well, Steve Jobs is dead now. But we, you know, we're, we're using Steve both as a actual example and metaphorically when I say Steve Jobs insert you know all of the upper management of Apple the ones that are all millionaires and billionaires they're all getting that money because you are out there working for them you are providing these services that allow them to make the big bucks while you make the little minuscule financial compensations that's one reason why the rich people are rich. Another reason why the rich people are rich is because you don't only work for them to make and distribute the stuff they sell. You buy it. Steve Jobs can make iPhone 5 all day long. If you don't buy it, it doesn't matter what Steve Jobs makes does sells it doesn't matter you look and now there are always exceptions are there some rich people who got rich because they inherited money and have never done anything worthwhile in their life they've probably not really employed very many people other than personal servants and you know I'm, do they're not contributing anything they're not doing anything they're not selling anything do those people exist yes i give you paris hilton are there some people born into money that are rich? Absolutely. Absolutely. Do the majority of rich people fall into that category? I doubt it. Steve Jobs is rich, was rich, will be rich, whatever. Because you people bought what he was selling literally and figuratively. Movie stars, who it's okay, of course, if you're a liberal Democrat, we don't mind rich movie stars. Oh, we, f you liberal Democrats fucking idolize. You are rich movie stars. Rich movie stars are rich because you bought what they're selling. Bill Gates is rich because you bought what he is selling. You see, rich people cannot become rich. The corporations cannot become rich unless you buy what they're selling. Corporations are like government. Government and corporations have no money of their own. The government has money because it takes money from citizens in the form of taxes. Corporations have money because they take money from citizens by selling them things. And of course, you know, you have it built like your iPhone 5, you have it built by slave labor in China. You ship it over here, you sell it, you make a gazillion percent profit. 
That's how you become rich. But they can't do that without your willing participation. Just as you as tax slaves have to willingly pay your taxes every year in order for the government to get its money, you have to willingly purchase the products and services offered by the rich people. Walmart. Nobody has ever dragged you to Walmart and forced you to buy something in that store. Yet many of you out there absolutely hate Walmart. And understand, as I'm saying all of this, I'm not saying the corporations are perfect. I'm not saying corporations are blameless. I'm not saying rich people are perfect. I'm not saying rich people are blameless. I'm not saying there's not tensions of... I mean, excuse me, the corporations are part of the state. This entire podcast is about how the state is evil. I am not defending the corporations. What I am saying is this. The commandant of the concentration camp cannot gas the Jews if the Jews escape from the concentration camp. The reason the Jews can't escape from the concentration camp is because the 99% peons, like all of you out there, built the walls around the camp, built the fences around the camp, built the guard towers around the camp, and then guard the camp. The rich people in the United States, whom you claim are raping the economy and doing all these evil things, and the corporations, which are raping the economy and doing many evil things, they cannot do this unless you work for them and buy their products and services. They can't do this without you. So when you're hating on the rich, remember... All the money rich people ever had at one time belonged to somebody other than them. They got that money not because they went out and stole it, not for the most part. Yes, some of them get government loans. Some of them get government subsidies. Some of them get corporate welfare. Some of them inherited the money. Yes, some of them did in fact get their money that route. Most of them, well over 50%, have all the money they have because you helped them earn that money, make that money, get that money, whatever word, phrase you want to use for it, and because you bought their shit. Not only that, but when you bought their shit, when you went out and you bought your new iPad from a multi-billion dollar corporation, that manufactured that iPad using slave labor in China. When you bought that iPad, did you pay cash for it? Or did you put it on your credit card? Your credit card that was issued to you by a bank, by a multi-billion dollar banking corporation, owned and operated by rich people who have been bailed out by the federal government using tax money and on that credit card are you paying interest which is going to pay the salary of the CEO of the multi-billion dollar banking corporation whom you hate because he's rich, because he got bailed out by the government. The government that you voted for, the government that you willingly obey, the government that you willingly pay taxes to, the government that you give legitimacy by voting for it. Do you see here That the rich people that you hate so much, they are rich because of you. Not because you had money and the rich people broke into your home and stole it from you. They're rich because you serve them, you work for them, you buy their product, you buy their products with their products. You buy the plasma television. 
I mean, a fucking a fucking plasma television probably cost about three dollars to manufacture. And what did, I I have no clue what a plasma television sells for. Okay, absolutely no fucking idea. Whether it's a hundred dollars, five hundred, I don't know. I have no idea. But it probably cost about three dollars to manufacture by some Chinese people over there in China. You work for the corporation selling the plasma TV. You get your minimum wage and then you take your credit card and you buy a plasma TV. You use a product of rich people, the credit card, to buy another product of rich people, the plasma TV. And then you pay interest to the credit card for the privilege of buying the plasma TV. And then you pay taxes. And then you vote for Bush or you vote for Obama because they're the same guy who then bails out the banking corporation that otherwise would have failed. Can you imagine if all those banks would have just gone under and failed? All the credit card debt that could, I mean, I don't know, would have been erased. I don't know what would have happened. But just the beauty of seeing all of that collapse and all of these rich people come crashing down. Of course, the corporation structure put there by the government that you support, that you voted for, insulates the actual individual people at the banking corporations from any responsibility. You know, it's the old thing, well, the CEO did not make all these bad investments. You know, Bank of America made these bad investments. Which, of course, Bank of America, I'm doing little quotes in the air, Bank of America as a corporate entity does not exist. It's a fiction. People did all the stupid things. You know, this is why Enron, I always have to fucking, yes, I know I'm going off topic. Thanks, Randy. Enron is always held up as this failure of capitalism. And this is why, this is why the rich people are rich, because this is how stupid you, the 99% or statist out there, are. Enron was a beautiful, beautiful example of capitalism working. The people who worked at Enron, not Enron because Enron is a corporation. Enron is a fictitious entity. Enron doesn't have a body or a brain or anything else. Enron is, does not exist. The people in charge at Enron did really stupid shit. Eventually, it caught up with them and their whole little scam collapsed. Now, if that happened to every person who did stupid shit with large amounts of money, we wouldn't be having all of these problems. But your government, the government you support, props up the banks, props up the automobile corporations, hands out all these subsidies and tax breaks and corporate welfare and all this other shit to help the rich people give you minimum wage jobs, which you happily accept, so that you can buy overpriced bullshit like plasma TVs. I mean, why? Why are why in the United States are we even still manufacturing televisions? I have never bought a television in my life. All my televisions have been giveaways from other people that bought a new TV. We have enough televisions in this country to last like forever. Especially now since so many people watch TV on computer screens. We, do we really need you know, iPad? Do we really need an iPad 7 or 8 or whatever. Do we really need an iPhone 5? Yes, and yes, we do because you people will run out and you will buy these things on your credit cards as fast as you can and then you will wonder, why are the rich people rich? They must be evil. Really. The rich people must be evil because... You were dumb enough to work for them for minimum wage and then take their credit card that you're paying interest on and buy their overpriced products that you don't really need. They're, uh, if they're evil, do you think maybe you're stupid? Do you think that could be a factor? Because I do. Next up. The rich people are oblivious to, you know, the plight of the poor. Now, there's, there's some truth to this. Let me tell you some story here. 
No, Randy, I am not going off topic. This is completely relevant. I work for an event company. And as doing that, we do some corporate events, among other things. So once in a while, I get to be in you know the same space as the rich and famous. And when I say the rich, in some cases, I mean like really fucking uber rich. This isn't like to name drop. I'm not hanging out with them. They don't know me by name. They don't call me up or anything like that. This is just when I say in the same space, I'm talking about in the same building. You know, they're on the fourth floor. I'm in the basement, but still. A while back, we did an event at a very, 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 very ritzy and expensive hotel up in a Colorado ski town that will not be mentioned. And at this corporate event, there were a shit ton of fucking rich people there and wannabe rich people. And the hotel staff who is used to dealing with uber-rich people, you know, year-round, all the time, went to very great lengths to make sure the rich people staying in that hotel did not have any contact with the poor people. And by the poor people, I mean those of us who work for a living. Me and the rest of the event crew, at one point, had to put up curtains in the hallway so that to to segregate one half of the hall from the other half because the rich people were in, for the sake of convenience, we'll call it the north end of the hallway where the meeting room was, and we were in the south end of the hallway loading out our truck and doing some work. And so had the rich people in the north end of the hallway looked south in the hallway, they would have seen us moving back and forth between the room we were working in and the outside door as we were loading the truck and pushing equipment from the room to the truck. The hotel staff deemed this unacceptable. The rich people could not see us, you know, working class people. I mean, we didn't have ties on. Some of us didn't shave that morning. We had broken a sweat. They could not see us pushing road cases to the truck. We had to put up a curtain so the rich people would not see us. Another point, we had a large piece of scenery that had to come into the building. The building was very poorly designed. We couldn't get it in through the loading elevators because they were too small. And so we had to bring it through one of the main entrances that went right through the bar restaurant because it was the only set of doors tall enough to get this thing through and had a hallway, everything wide enough that we could flip this over and get it through there. We had to get permission to carry this piece of equipment through those doors. And what I, I mean, it took the owner of our business like half a day to go around talking to the appropriate people at the hotel to get permission for us to carry this item through those doors. Because in that bar and in that restaurant would be the rich people, the clients of this hotel. And if they saw us carrying an item, if they saw unshaven people who had sweat on their bodies, people who made you know less than $500,000 a year, if they saw us carrying an object, it would be devastating. The rich people would be devastated by this. And so we got our permissions. And as we're moving this large scenery piece towards the doors, security comes rushing at us to stop us. Fortunately, one of the security people who knew we had permission was close by. I mean, they were on their radios calling for backup. And fortunately, one of the the security person who knew we had permission was on his radio. He heard this. He came out there and stopped them from literally fucking tackling us. Because we were going to carry an object into the building. And we were not using the servant's entrance We were using a door that was reserved for the masses. 
for the rich people. And I look at things like that. And it's easy for me to understand why you 99 percenters, why you statist, why you people who hate freedom. And I mean that. Okay, I mean what the fuck I'm saying right now. It is really fucking easy for me to understand why you hate the rich people. I mean, after hearing those two stories, if if somebody out there doesn't understand why a lot of people hate rich people, then I'm going to say there's something wrong with you. It's really easy to hate the rich people for doing that kind of shit. And so when my mother says things like Mitt Romney is going to kill Romney, whatever the fuck his name is, that Mitzi is going to kill all the poor people, you know, on one hand I say, Mother, why? how can you be this stupid? On the other hand... I understand why poor people think the rich people hate and despise them and why poor people think the rich people ignore them. I can totally fucking understand this. And it's not, you know, the conclusion that the rich people hate the poor people is not a difficult conclusion to come to when you see things like that, when you see the rich people being insulated, being isolated, being kept away from you know, anybody else who doesn't make less than $500,000 a year. But then take a minute and ask yourself, who is it in this in these stories at this hotel? Who is it that's insulating and isolating the rich people from the rest of the universe? It's not other rich people. It's the minimum wage slaves working at the hotel. I mean, there was no at no point did any rich person come up to us and say, "Hey, you can't bring that equipment through this door." No rich person came up and said, hey, you guys need to put a curtain in this hallway because I'm rich and if I see you, it's it's going to affect my mental stability or, you know, or, or, or whatever, or it's going to make me, you know, pull out a gun and shoot people. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. No rich person ever made, you know, ever came to segregate themselves from us. The segregation was all implemented, instituted, and enforced by the people who work at the hotel. And actually, they probably make better than minimum wage. But like the guys who park the cars and the valets and you know the security people, none of them are pulling 500000 a year. I'm pretty sure of that. I don't know that for a fact. Going out on a limb. Now, the person who runs that hotel probably pulling 500000 a year. But those security people who came running towards us because we were walking towards, you know, the master entrance door where the masses come in, where the rich people get to walk into the building, those security people are not making 500000 a year. So when you very correctly observe that to a large extent, the rich people, the CEOs, you know, the billionaires, the millionaires, don't have any clue about what goes on for, when we, what do we say, poor people, for average people, for normal people, for the 99% of the population that isn't billionaires. You know, when these people, when you say that those rich people have no contact with everybody who isn't at their income level, I can't really disagree with that. I mean, there's not a lot of disagreement to be had with that. But whose fault is it? Who is it that makes goddamn sure these rich people are isolated from the world, are insulated from the world? What part are you, you personally, what part do you play in that? Are the rich people going to kill the poor? 
Do the rich people hate you so much they want you dead? If you're smart, based on what I've said so far, you already know the answer to this. The rich people, to a large extent, don't know that you exist. Because people who are slightly richer than you, but not anywhere, not anywhere near as rich as the rich people, make sure the rich people know that you don't, don't know, God, I can't talk, don't know that you exist. Second of all, without you to buy their products and to work for them, the rich people aren't going to be rich. Okay? The rich people, Mitt Romney, Romy, Rom, Romney, Rom, Mitzi, whatever the fuck his name is, Obama the third, I mean, whatever. Okay, Mitzi is not going to kill all of the poor people by starving them to death. And here, he's not going to do that. Because first of all, if the rich kill all the poor people, who's going to take out their trash? Who is going to bring them their room service at ski lodge hotels? Who is going to ship their products across the country? Who is going to work in their stores for them? Who is going to do their phone support? Who is going to do, you know, who, who's going to do all this? Who's going to mow their lawns? If the rich people kill all the poor people, who's going to buy all the shit the rich people are selling? Who's going to buy all of those iPhones? Who's going to subscribe to iTunes? Who's going? Who the hell's going to buy cable TV if it's not for poor people? Who's going to buy iPads? Who's going to buy plasma TVs? Who's going to buy Xbox? If the rich people kill all the poor people, who's going to die in the wars? Who's going to be in Afghanistan right now killing other people? And if there's no wars, how, there's not going to be any demand for the weapons of war. A lot of rich people are rich because of the military-industrial complex. Without poor people to die in war, there is no war. Without war, you don't need drones. You don't need cruise missiles. You don't need aircraft carriers. You don't need fighter craft. You don't need tanks. You don't need ICBMs. You don't need military bases. You don't need food to feed all the soldiers. You don't need MREs. You don't need clean water. You don't need medical supplies. You don't need uniforms. You have to have poor people in order to have a military. You have to have a military in order to have war. You have to have war in order for money to flow from productive citizens who pay taxes to the government to the military-industrial complex so that the military-industrial complex can then bribe the government to buy more shit to make more wars, so forth and so on. You have to have poor people to make all of that happen. And... The poor people, that's you, those of you who hate the rich, I'm talking to you. You have to willingly participate. You have to go to your job for the corporation. You have to buy the products sold by the corporations. You have to use the credit card and pay interest on your purchases to the corporation. You have to vote for the government that gives the corporate welfare to the corporation. And the corporations, the corporations are here because I left out the step. The corporation is where the rich CEOs, the evil people that you hate, get their money. They're not stealing it from you from under your mattress. They're taking it from you because they're taking it from you right in fucking front of you and you're handing, you are willingly handing them the money. You're working for the corporation. You are buying from the corporation. 
You are using the credit card from the corporation. You are voting for the government owned by the corporation. You are voting for the government that gives the corporate welfare. You are voting for the government that taxes you while giving the corporation a tax break. And all the time, you're hating the poor people. But you, you're, thank you, Randy. You're all the time, you're hating the rich people. But all the while, you are enabling the rich people. You are, just as voting legitimizes the system of government, just as voting, as I've explained in previous editions, I've been talking about this for previous three editions of Stating the Obvious, just as voting not only legitimizes the system, voting is the system, you are not only legitimizing the corporations and the rich people who run them and profit from them, you are creating it without you working for them if nobody worked for, I mean, who I've been using Apple, just who, who's like an, a truly evil, BP, thank you, Randy, British Petroleum. If you didn't work for BP, and if you did not buy their product, BP couldn't exist. It's just like I talked about with the presidential election. If nobody showed up to vote except for the Messiah and the Mitzi, and they would each vote for themselves, if nobody showed up at the presidential election, there would be no president of the United States. Okay. If nobody worked for the corporations, if nobody worked at BP and nobody bought BP's product, there would be no BP. You're doing... Nobody is coming into your home with a gun, at least not yet. Now, oh my God, thank... Every once in a while, Randy has her moments of brilliance. Yes, you are absolutely right. I was about to say this. I was about to say nobody is coming into your home and forcing you to work for a corporation or to buy their products. Wrong. Obamacare. Your fucking filthy ass nasty messiah. Quote unquote past. Healthcare reform, which forces people to buy a service from corporations. It forces you to buy medical insurance from corporations which pay CEOs large amounts of money. And that's only going to be the beginning. Because now that we have established the government which is owned and run by the corporations, can force citizens to buy products and services from corporations? If you think you've seen the last of that, you are so fucking stupid that don't ever... I, I, I hate you. I hope you fucking die. I mean that. If you think this is the last time the government is going to force citizens to buy services or products from corporations, you are possibly one of the stupidest motherfuckers on the planet Earth. We are about to enter a whole new world of the rich getting richer. Imagine if, instead of bailing out the automobile corporations, the government simply passed a law that says everybody has to buy a car. What if instead of bailing out the banks, the government passed a law that says everybody has to get a checking account at Bank of America and get a credit card from Bank of America and spend at least $1,000 a year on that credit card? That's exactly what health care reform, I'm making little quotes in the air with my fingers, that's the biggest fucking joke. The health care reform bill is a very thinly veiled bailout of the health insurance corporations. Instead of as with the banks and the automobile corporations where the government took the money from the taxpayers and gave it to the corporations who then gave it to their CEOs, this time the government is just forcing the taxpayers to give the money directly to the corporations who will then give it to their CEOs, who will then be rich, and then you will sit around and you will hate them because they are rich without ever realizing the role that you played 
in their becoming rich. They're not rich because they're evil. They're rich because you are stupid. They're rich because you buy what they are selling. And the rich people aren't going to kill the poor people. Because without you, they're nothing. They need you to continue to be slaves. Let's talk about slaves for a minute, because we have time. Because I'm doing great on time. Randy, see how good I do on time when I focus? Hold on, I need a drink. Let's talk about slaves for a moment. Aristotle wrote a book called Politics. It's brilliant. There is... Oh, is my... Eh, it's not in the recording studio. There's a really good translation of it that I read for a class I took that focused exclusively on this book. If I remember, I'll put a link to that particular translation. In the politics, Aristotle states that there are four different types, classes, whatever, of people. There are men, there are women, there are children, and there are slaves. Without getting too philosophical, there is, between men and women and children, there is a difference in degree. Between slaves and the other three, there is a difference in kind. And what this, well, let me start here. So in Aristotle's reckoning, the purpose of men is to bring resources into the household. That's wealth, you know, that's money, that's, you know, whatever resources is, is whatever resources needs to be. The purpose of women is to manage the household and allocate the resources that the man brings into the household. So the woman is controlling the servants, raising the kids, deciding what color to paint the kitchen, deciding which bills to pay, you know, how much money to put in a savings account, all that other stuff. The purpose of the children, other than being children, is to be educated to eventually one day take the role of man or woman, obviously. You know, in an Aristotle's time, of course, he is literally breaking this down by gender. You know, in, our, in modern days, I, I would say to an extent these roles can still exist. They don't have to be, you know, the person bringing in the resources doesn't have to be the man. It can be the woman. I know some couples like this where the woman brings in most of the money. The man stays at home, raises the kids, uh, educates the children at home. It works great, okay? But there's two distinct roles there is what Aristotle's going for. Slaves, on the other hand, so the children are different from the men and the women in that they have a difference in that... I'm having a brain cramp. Sorry, guys. <laughs> A difference in degrees. So they will become men or women one day, but they're not right now. So they're they're aspiring to be that. They can be that. They will be that. Aristotle then says there's a fourth category. Those are the slaves. Now, a lot of people in more modern translations try to say that when Aristotle is talking about slaves in the politics, he's talking about employees, people who work for other people. That is not what he is talking about. In Aristotle's world, slaves are people who are different in kind. Slaves are people who cannot bring resources into the household. They can't do it. They are people who, if they had a household, could not manage the household and allocate the resources. They could not do it. And some of you will say, well, but anybody can do those things. And I'm going to say, I am with Aristotle on this. There are people in this world, and if you haven't already figured this one out, you're called statist. You're the 99%. There are people who are, in Aristotle's terms, you are slaves. 
You are people who cannot provide for yourself. You have to have the rich people. You have to have the rich people to give you a minimum wage job. Because you cannot create wealth. You have to have the rich people to sell you iPhones and iPads and plasma TVs. Because you can't create your own art. You cannot entertain yourself. You cannot you know, do sculpture or pottery or music or any of these things. You can't do theater. You can't read books. You can't write poetry. Just as Aristotle is saying, slaves are people who can never manage or create or run or bring value into a household and therefore must be slaves to a household because the household has to do those things for them or the people who are slaves will literally die if they are on their own. So too, those of you who are poor, those of you who are statist, those of you who are the 99%, those of you who are super religious, those of you in Occupy Wall Street, those of you who are teabaggers, those of you who work for the corporations who buy their stuff, you are slaves in that sense. You cannot exist without the rich people any more than the rich people can exist without you. The rich people use you to become rich. But you can't escape that because without the rich people to use you, to give you purpose, to provide you with trinkets, you have no purpose. You cannot survive on your own. And so you hate the rich because you're a statist. Yet without the rich, you can't survive. I don't bother with the other side. I'm always right. Is there anything I've said in this entire podcast that's wrong? If you think so, you know where the fuck to find me. God at C-Y-M-L-I-B-S-O-C dot com. Yeah, start it back up. Are we going? There's not enough. I'm, I don't want to make a part two. I, 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 we just finished recording, and I just had this thought. Because, you know, as I closed this, I said, you can't survive without the rich. And some people are going to say, well, that's an exaggeration. That's bullshit. No, no, no. Listen to me. Listen to me. How many of you out there can provide your own food? I mean, listen, we live in a nation state. Where those of you out there who are statist, you do not know what is and isn't food. You need to go to myplate.gov in order to find out what you're supposed to be eating. Every animal on the planet Earth, from one-celled organisms all the way up to elephants and giraffes, every animal on the planet Earth, knows instinctively what is and isn't food except 
for statist. You people need the government to feed you, to tell you what is and isn't food, to tell you what kind of food is healthy and what isn't healthy, to tell you how much you're supposed to be eating. If you think you can survive without the corporations, without the rich people, without the government, can you grow and hunt your own food? The agricultural corporations which have billions and billions of dollars and shit tons of rich people and buy the government. They're doing that because you... I mean, we live in a country... I was reading some stuff about this recently. There's some city somewhere, I forget what it was, they made it illegal to feed homeless people. In in the parks, There's a the law actually says that you cannot share food with people who look poor. Okay. There's other incidences where police officers are showing up at farmers markets type gatherings that have not been officially sanctioned by the government and pouring bleach on people's food in order to contaminate and destroy it. And most of you out there cannot, if you had to, could not, cannot grow your own food, hunt animals, skin them, cook them. You cannot provide food for yourself. You need the rich people. You need the corporations. You need the state. You need these rich people that you hate so much to provide you with food. Without the rich people, you will die. Just as Aristotle said, the slaves need men and women. They need the households run by the men and women in order to live. You statists who hate the rich so much, the rich that can't be rich without your cooperation, the rich who can't be rich without you working for them, without you buying their products, without you supporting the government that gives them your tax money and bails them out, those rich people that you hate, you cannot survive without them. Without the agricultural corporations that put the bread that you shouldn't be eating anyhow because wheat and grain is not a natural part of the human diet. Without the corporations to put the bread, literally the bread, in the grocery stores. You would die. And so instead of fucking hating on the rich people for taking advantage of you and I... I mean, you, I can't blame the rich people. If you're willing to work for the rich people for minimum wage and then buy your motherfucking plasma TV and an iPhone, why not? I mean, why should the rich people feel guilty about taking advantage of you when you're participating, when you vote for the politician that gives the corporations bailouts and tax cuts and corporate welfare? I mean, why hold that against the rich people who are smart enough to profit from your stupidity? Instead of hating the rich people, fucking free your mind. Stop participating in the system. Walk away from it. Think for yourself. Anarcho-capitalism is the fucking answer. The answer is not voting Messiah or voting Mitzi. It's not more regulations. It's not hating rich people. The answer is freedom. But those of you who are statist, if you have freedom and if you have to provide for yourself, you will die because you can't do it. And that, from your perspective, is the dilemma. You hate the rich, but you need the rich. Freedom.